Connor's Panther, welcome. I'm gonna need to push you guys away a little bit actually because this canvas is humongous. One second. There we go, even a little bit further. Even a little bit further. There we go. Perfect, all right. That's all right, that's all just blue sky. We won't miss that too much. It'll make sense. Um, let's have a look see here. What can we add? I've got my extra stick. We'll wind this up. There we go. There we go, there we go. Grab this one and on here. This is gonna be for our picture. It's gonna stand on this. It's all gonna make sense. It's all gonna make sense. Here we go. Just like that. Gonna grab this picture. Grab it just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna stand it on. Watch this. Bang! Look at that. It's not conventional, but it'll work. All right. Let's move this piece out of the way. Sneak this in here. Is it going to fit somewhere? There we go. Can it sit there? Eh. Not really. Give me a second, Dean. Good morning, Daniel. I've been good. Can you see them? It's because it's out at the beach today. Thanks. Oh, Pink, welcome. I was wondering who was going to be the first regular who left online. Okay, mate. Did you just start the snow? Uh, started it on the beach today. Oh, about right. 30 minutes ish. Oh. But, uh, yeah, and the wind and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty rough weather out there. I was not sure. blow away. Like, oh, it tried. It tried. <laughs> you wanted to like, keep holding it down or something. Yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit of that. It was pretty wild. Are you streaming? Um, I am indeed. Oh. We've got some lovely people here. Just kidding. I was going to say, if you want a super, I got super young, but if you're streaming. That's all good. <laughs> nah, Shelby brought me a feed actually. Oh, um, good, good. Yeah, that's why she showed up. She was oh. probably on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was all good, that was all good. But yeah, no, I wouldn't recommend going down to the beach at the moment, guys. No, I would not <laughs> go here, but that's all right. It wasn't a clever decision, but uh, once I got there, it was all on, so we just stayed. Nice. But... <laughs> nice. That's all good, eh? And hello, Larissa. Welcome to your second stream ever. Good to have you here. Kia ora. Welcome. I stayed up thinking about what I would want to see painted. Well, this is a really special piece. Um, I'm not going to give you too much backstory on it, but even if we just talk about it compositionally, it's really special because what it is, is it's a lady on a wakeboard getting pulled by a horse. So the actual rope is attached to the horse 
heading off down the lake and she's it's actually the picture's taken by her because she's holding a gopro so she's gopro-ing herself on a wakeboard being pulled along by a horse it's the most wild image you could imagine um, and so there's a lot of perspective to it there's lots of angles there's a little bit of a fisher eye lens to it all this fun stuff's going to come together to make what's already becoming a pretty cool painting lj welcome Mind to share your hair care routine. Honestly, my hair care routine has just been thrown up the yin yang by um, Shelby. Shelby has just introduced me to Dr. B's, and that is what I'm using as shampoo and conditioner now. Yeah, but um, yeah, so I'll show you the picture to help you with a bit more context. This is the actual picture. And so you can see that sort of fisheye style to it. You can see the horizon line. You can see all this perspective sort of culminating to a point with the horses. So although this horse is a small area, it's going to really play a massive role because all these lines converge to where the horse is because the horse is pulling the rope. So that's going to be fun. Hello. Welcome, guys. Um, why bother painting when you can just AI it? That's true. AI is becoming a real thing. And so when you talk about why bother painting, I think probably a more appropriate question is why bother painting realism? But that question already got ruled out a little bit when um, uh, 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 photography became a thing. Um, painting instead of AI, because there's a some, certain something about a human making art, a primal uh, capturing of expression, um, a something raw, something, um, something more emotion driven than actual practicality driven. I think that's where art will start to sit in terms of using paint rather than actually getting AI to do it. Don't get me wrong, I love AI art. I've got a, uh, my profile picture is AI art. As soon as I heard you could get AI art, I immediately went and got some. I was a huge fan. Um, yeah. No texture in AI. This is also true. So that doesn't mean you have to use texture, but it means you can actually play with it more and you'll be more novel because of it. So, but yeah, I think one of the beautiful things here too is if you look at this picture, um, one thing, and I'll show you this picture again to help it help out. An AI drawing this, see how the horse is really small, really small, and the actual composition of it. If we come back to the actual picture, my mind has made a mistake, and the mistake's been I've increased the size of the horse. And so actually, the whole perceptible, uh, perception of the picture, what's been created, the whole uh, recreation of it, everything's wrong. All the shapes, all the tones, all the areas, all the perspective, it's all incorrect, because I'm human. And I didn't put down any guidelines. So if an AI did this, it'd be perfect. But actually, the subject's not perfect and neither am I, and that's gonna be part of the beauty of the painting. So, so, I hope that answers the question. Or that guy just made the comment and then just skipped off it, which I totally appreciate too. I get a long-winded reply, I get it. Thanks, Jocelyn, appreciate that. Um, all right, let's have a look see here. So I'm gonna open up with probably I'm going to get a little bit of red too, because there's just some popping areas of red that I'm going to grab, but only after I've had a run around with these uh, weird blues, a few tans, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Richie. Rich C. Not just a regular C. He's a rich C. That's cool. How do you match the colour? Um... Well, you can do a couple of things. You can either match it perfectly, or you can just have some fun and get as close as you can get. A lot of the colors I add to the page, uh, to the page, to the canvas, are actually straight out of the tube. There's two reasons for that. First off, it's easy, it's fast, and um, I bought the tube of paint because I like that color, so why would I mix it? That applies half the time. And the second reason is because then if you're coming back later, and later layers, especially with acrylic, with acrylic, it dries so fast, I can come back in later layers and bang, there's my color. I don't need to worry about uh, color matching because I actually was just using this color throughout the tube. So that's what this blue is here. There's a bit of green, the areas that are unmixed are straight from the tube, the black, obviously. 
this pastel pink, this wasn't mixed, that was straight from the tube. So that's what we do there. <laughs> Thanks, Scampy Mango, I appreciate you. Um, but I'm not gonna, ooh, am I just gonna add it straight or maybe some mixes? We're gonna do a wee bit of a mix, guys. Nothing special, just because we gonna add something in. What's the biggest canvas I've ever painted, Daniel? That is a great question. The biggest canvas I've ever painted is, I forget the exact measurement, about four and a half or five meters. It was just below five meters. It was an inch, so I forget. Just below five meters wide and about a meter point nine high. So it was big, it was big. Um, but this will be on the bigger side for a canvas, size for a canvas. This is 40 by 60. Um, and I like that. It's got a nice balance to it. Um, so it's two thirds, one, uh, two thirds, one third. I like that shape. Um, but typically the usual ones, I think it's 48 by 60. But I'm just guessing. I forget these things. Oh, interesting. I better wash all these brushes. Naughty me. Um, but that's all right. That's all right. We can deal with this because I have no spares. Sorry, what's that there? Is this a studio if you don't mind me asking because I accidentally chose it for my major? It, what is studio art if you don't mind me asking? Because I accidentally chose <laughs> Studio art, it depends. Um, so at, at Wellington, when we'd have studio art or studio sessions or you know, they've got a whole bunch of names for it. Typically what it meant is you'd be in a very similar situation to this. We've got individual little cubicles and you're all um, doing your own craft. They're really special at Wellington. I mean, Massey really had some goodies. Um, but basically what would happen is you'd be given a sort of course to follow and the course wouldn't try and tell you what to do with your art. It would try and give you hoops to leap through. So get this much art by this stage, be ready for this exhibition at this stage, have this much writing about your stuff at this stage. Thanks, Folo, you're the champion. Um, and what you'd end up doing is you'd be in this little studio space where you'd be making your art. So you'd be very much left to your own devices, um, you'd touch base with the tutor every now and again. Russell, love you to bits. Um, <coughs> bless me. Um, so a lot of people would use their studios the whole time, they'd be in there all the time, and other people would work outside, um, natural nature photography or um, street photography or street art. Typically you wouldn't confine yourself to the studio, but it was there for you if you wanted it. Studio space. But, I mean, again, I don't know where in the world you are, so that definition might be completely wrong for you. So, how do you know when to stop painting? Like how to avoid overworking a piece. I always do too much. That's a, doing too much is a good problem to have, Rich C. Um, I think when it comes to paint, there's different methods when it comes to finishing a painting for your own paintings that you're keeping. Commission paintings is just a little bit of a different thing. In terms of, for me, um, I, when I think I've finished it, I'll put it in the corner of the studio for about two or three days and just sit with it. And over that period, I can decide whether, okay, this is in a space where I like it, or are we thinking, I need to work on this, I need to work on that. I'd like to see some more green, some pink, some blue in it. it gives me time to consider that. Um, but, 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 if it's a commission, there's a really cool rule to apply. So with a commission, you usually come up with a price before um, you start. So I'll go into the artistic influence in just a second. Um, since you come up with a price before you start, Say it's 400, say it's 700, two grand, whatever it is. Say it's $1,000. Um, make the art, because you've priced the art, and once you get through the art and complete it, get it to a stage where actually you think in your own mind, actually, I'd prefer not to take $1,000, I want to keep my art. That's when you've finished the commission. That's when it's ready to go to the person, because, yeah. So, that's basically the rule I apply when I'm doing art for other people. This is a project of passion, so we may take this too far, we may not go far enough, who knows. Um, I've ruined many a piece by going too far, 
but I didn't regret it because I went too far because I was enjoying painting it so much and I just couldn't help myself but to put another coat on it. And the result, yeah, I ruined it. But you know what? I had fun ruining it. <laughs> so I wouldn't take it back. Um, artistic influences. Talked about this a wee bit. One of the biggest influences you can have on your art and one of the key reasons to go to art school is the peers that you make. The friends you make at art school, the friends you make wherever you are, Polytech, um, wherever, I find that they have the biggest influence. They care about you, they want to see you grow, they want to see you on your journey, and they want to be a part of it with you. And so their ability to influence that is extremely potent. Um, now, people may have a different view, Maybe their lecturers, maybe their tutors have a massive impact on their art. For me, I had amazing tutors and lecturers, but they didn't have an impact on me. Not like my friends did. Not in the way that they were able to actually really inspire and control the style I came out with. But you might be different. So take it with a grain of salt. Paul, welcome to the stream. Good to have you here. Long time no see. Um, <laughs> cheers, guys. So wholesome. Jamie, you're welcome to be here. I haven't seen your name before, but it's good to have you here. Here we go. Now, you'll see the face is just a little bit off at the moment. That's okay, because as we add more layers, we want to make sure we're not giving more attention to one area over the rest of the painting. The face itself is only about 5% of the work. So if we over concentrate on 5% and leave out the 95%, it'll be a disaster. In fact, there's a square up here which has no paint in it whatsoever. I'm going to fix that. The reason that square's there is because I had the image up there while I was at the beach. It was so windy that I uh, taped the image to the work and couldn't move it, otherwise I was too afraid I'd lose it. So, this awkward little square up here, this is... And it's funny because you can say, well, did you check the weather report? And yes, I knew it was a terrible, windy day, but I went for it. Let me have a look see here, a bit more. So because it's the first layer on this area of canvas, I'm just going to coat it. I'm really not going to be picky with what happens there. Just like that. Bang. The whole way across. Perfect. All the white space. That's why I got this colour in the first place. I'll use it all up. Be back in just a second, guys. I'm not ignoring you, just trying to get coverage small brush that I'm using at the moment. There we go. Beautiful. You know, carry that across. Maybe a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> White shirt while painting. I would get paint on it straight away. Sebastian, I believe in you. I don't think you get paint on it straight away. I reckon if you put on a nice white shirt, what would happen is you would subconsciously change a little bit and focus on keeping it clean. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Um, we may be doing another horse picture, so don't hold your breath. But I have been talking to someone in Pennsylvania who's interested in a very similar horse picture. They're after the exact same picture, actually. But before I could give them the go-ahead, I need to talk to Matt, the guy who owned the original horse picture of the two horses, and get copyright off him which we've now got. And so, I'm just waiting to hear back from our friend, if he'd like that. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Ray Sean. Appreciate that, appreciate that. We've got a lot more to go, but I'm excited to see where it goes. We don't wanna lose that wildness to it, guys. Um, the character in this is wild, the subject is wild. We have to make sure we encapsulate or realize that vibrant wildness. Is that the right word? Wildness? Wilderness? Who knows? 
I want a wild flavour to the picture. That's what I'm trying to say. I will be multicoloured. <laughs> It's a good way to be. It's a good way to be. Do you think being artistic is a gift or something that can be taught? Rich C, I I think uh, probably when it comes to art, I think of art the same way I think about paint, uh, dancing and singing. I think everyone should do it. Maybe some people are slightly better than others, but everyone can do it. And everyone should do it. We should all sing in the shower. I'm a terrible singer, but I love singing in the shower. And the reason why I think everyone should do it is it's good for you. It's a natural thing. They talk about art for therapy and things like this. Well, art's something that actually everyone can get something out of. That's why wine and paint nights are so fun. You must not be seeing my post. Um, I might have missed it, Paul, but uh, I can see that one. Bigger than caps, hard to miss. <laughs> Um, gonna tell my. <laughs> mm. Old Bob Ross, what a hero. I do like how when you go on places like Twitch, Bob Ross shows up and he's just, it's just replays of his work. I find that very wholesome. Let's just keep adding these colours on here. There's so much blue to have fun with. I'm gonna add a bit of yellow to it. It's gonna pop it into a murky green. And there's a lot of murky green in this work. I don't wanna hide from the murky green. I wanna embrace it. It's a lake, it's got green in it. I want that to be emphasized. By the end of the colors, matter, once we're finished with the colors in this and you see few ripples on it, but you see a lot of green, hopefully that'll insinuate lake to you. I don't want you to confuse and think it might be the sea. I wanna give you a vibe of a lake. <laughs> Okay, smarty, says Paul. Um, I'll keep an eye out for the post, Paul. But I don't think I've seen it just yet. But I will check after this. You'll have my undivided attention once I'm off the stream. I promise you that. Um, green is your favorite color, Rich C. That is a great favorite color. You're gonna love this work once it's finished because I'm gonna load this up with so much green. It's gonna be wild. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Yeah. It's very precarious. It's on a uh, wheelie chair. It's a container that's open, so it's a little bit wonky. And uh, what's gonna happen, for sure, is I'm gonna bump it off at one stage and it's gonna fall into the ground. But if I push it away like that, today might not be that day. <laughs> Thanks, Larissa. Appreciate you. There we go. Beautiful. There's also a bit of green on the character that we're painting. Now, the temptation with hair is to think, oh, she's got brown hair. Oh, she's got blonde hair. Blonde, you grab yellow. Brown, you just grab the color brown. And you wonder, why does it look like she's wearing a helmet? Look deeper into the hair and wonder what colors are actually there. Do you see reds? Do you see greens? Do you see purples, magentas? All these things will be in her face and in her hair. Capture them, don't let them go. There we go, just a little bit of detail on that face. Just going in there with a little bit of green. Having some fun with it. Hey Kelly. How long have you been painting for and how has your style developed? I've been painting ever since I was a little tacker. My mum pushed me into art from about the age of two. I willingly went. I liked, uh, I liked art. I liked painting. I liked colours. There's something about it just resonated with me. Um, but in terms of, yeah. And so I'm 30 now. I turned 30 in Jeepers. When was it, guys? It was 12th of January. So how long ago was that? Someone did the math. I've been 34, because almost 30 days, exactly 30 days. I don't know. Doesn't feel a whole lot different, guys. There we go, beautiful. Okay, add a bit more of this color through here. Combine it with a bit more of our gloss gel. 
That's gonna thin it out a little bit and make it shine a little bit. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> I'm glad, Rich C. Keep loving art. Here we go. Look at these murky colours in here. All these layers, these fun, splooge colours hanging out here. And then there's this fun little reflection down here. I want to accentuate that. I want to play with it. We'll see where it takes us. What else is there, guys? Did I miss anything? Diana Ross. You're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad. Yeah. I always like the old school songs on it. I feel like TikTok's got so many, you know, powerful bouncing beats. It's fun to get some of those old school tracks back. And I feel like it's horrifying sometimes. You see like the most popular music has got like 300,000 reels on it. And you go to Diana Ross, it's like 2.7 thousand. And you're like, what? Diana Ross deserves more. Hello T, welcome. I don't know why it's not notifying you T, that's outrageous. But you didn't miss much, you're here now. We've got an exciting work. If you haven't seen this one before, I started it today. I'm in love with it, it's, uh, it's coming along. There's gonna be a wild nature to this one. I'm gonna keep adding detail, but I'm not gonna to add too much. I'm gonna keep letting the paint be wild. So we're working with a small brush right now but I don't think we'll tone down any smaller than this one. We're gonna keep this one. Part of the reasoning for that is I wanna keep that brush stroke intensity, wild, splashing over the page, having fun. Thanks T, appreciate that. Appreciate you. There we go, a little bit through here, fantastic. If you can't quite make it out T, this is a lady. She's on a wakeboard. She's been pulled along a rope by a horse. This is a lake here, horizon line. And we have a GoPro stick coming down here, taking the photo. So there's lots of perspective. Lots of fun, lots of perspective. Lots going on. I like it. I like it. Um, here we go. And also, I've been at the beach all day, so we all went to the buzzer to remind me to hydrate every couple of minutes, but. Thanks, T. Mm. Thanks, Colette, appreciate you. Um. <clears throat> the important thing when it comes to pictures like this too, guys, this is, um, this is an important picture and part of the key to actually um, looking after it and making it special is making sure when you approach it and when you do it, you approach it with the right intention. And when I say the right intention, I mean positivity. Um, this one doesn't want to be painted when you're not in the right space for painting it. This is a picture that needs to be built up through layers in a way that actually there's this fun for the brush strokes. It doesn't want to all the brush strokes want to be having this free, fun, looseness to every single one of them. So when you look at it, you actually feel like, yes, the painter had fun making that. Um, and the subject is fun because of how, because of the energy behind the brush strokes. Just because they're more slashy, more all over the show, that's what we're after. So, so I don't want to ever get to a stage where I start just scratching away to a little bit of detail. I want to keep that energy high. I want to keep bouncing over the surface of it and adding paint everywhere. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gonna sneak around here just like that. Her face is gonna start taking shape. We don't want to do it too fast. We want to get more of a focus to this water. There's so much going on in the water in this picture, guys. There's the board cutting through it, leaving behind a dark trail with some highlights. There's the splash of the whiteboard coming up here. There's these ripples. There's a reflection of her 
just cascading down here into the darkness, a dark corner here, murky green, and then a shadow coming in here with a streak of blue in the horizon line. So we're going to play with all of these things. Be looking for some gifts soon. Have a good night. Hey, thank you so much, Paul. Appreciate you. And that must mean you're off to bed. So thanks for joining in for what the period you have joined in for. Appreciate you to no end. Jackie, good to have you here. Thank you very much. There you go. Beautiful. So I'm keep going a little bit long with this tan color. And then I'm going to bump into, oh, in fact, I'm going to go straight to it. Yellow oxide. Reminds me of seeing pixels zoomed in, but freehand. That's a fun way to put it. I actually had someone pop by on the uh, beach one day while I was painting. And he says, that's a great picture if you can't see that well. <laughs> and um, he's right. That's actually uh, one of the fun things you can do because every brush stroke we're putting down, we're acknowledging shapes and tones and gestural things within the painting. One fun thing you can do with these paintings is if you blur your vision or tilt your head slightly to the side, you'll actually see it almost quite crisply. But uh, when you see it with full definition, there's this wildness, these brush strokes all fighting with each other to be what they want to be. Um, and that's exactly how we want it. Thanks, T. Appreciate you. There we go. Now, this is going to be quite a hot color. This is a uh, yellow oxide. No, I lie to you. It's Indian yellow, which is pretty much... It's a shade of yellow, but it feels more like an orange. Long story short, it's a fun colour. And I'm combining it with magenta. So we're getting this dark mustard colour. And we're going to use that to capture a lot of these facial textures. Because she's got this very, very radiant skin colour. We want to capture that in the paint. There we go. Just like that. Coming down here. Coming down here. Yeah, and just around here. There we go. Coming around here. I'm going to let this come the whole way down here. Now we're talking just in there. A couple of toes here. This little part here. Coming up here, there's some land. Capture the land. It's a darker shade. Beautiful. Oh, that was coming even a little bit closer. Fantastic. We're going to do more of that. No. We're going to go straight into the uh, magenta. We'll use the last, the uh, Indian yellow. It's not a commission piece. This, well, it is. It's not a commission piece in that it's not been, uh, no one's buying this piece. This piece is going somewhere quite special. It's going to a surf shop uh, once it's completed. And the surf shop's going to have it on the wall. And then if it does sell, the money's going to go to local surf life-saving. That's fantastic, Chloe. I'm glad to hear it. Good for you. If you feel confident enough, I'd love for you to share the work with me. I'd love to see what you're up to. So, um, yeah, so I'm very excited by that. Um, and, yeah, with a bit of luck, someone will see something special in the picture. And we can get some more money going to a local surf life-saving group. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hello from the Philippines. Your proportions are off. Um, they will be slightly off. In fact, I was mentioning before that we had put too much uh, emphasis on the horse here and dragged it forward with its shadows here being too intense. And that's okay. And one of the things that, the reason why we're talking about that is actually one of the reasons why you'd go for human art over AI art is the mistakes. The mixed up, incorrect proportions. The, um, that's going to become part of the charm of human art. Thank you very much, Mike. You're an absolute champion. Appreciate you. Um, oh, and sorry guys, yes. So if you want any of the um, links go into my bio, there is a link tree there. You'll find the replays of these, a window to uh, submit commissions in, and you'll also find a 
AAAAA, link to Instagram if you want to connect there as well. So that's all available to you. It'll be my pleasure to connect more. And it's also my pleasure to be here using magenta. What a colour. There we go. There we go. Just like that. someone move <laughs> um, you blend well with your painting hey thank you very much the blending can be a little bit ad hoc sometimes I like to use the brush almost sometimes like a crayon really just etch it in there um, don't worry too much about the paint itself actually ending up uh, um, looking scruffy that's okay you'll figure out different little techniques to add to paint get the coverage of the paint Get the shape you're after and go for it. The most unusual commission. Look, the art goes on some wacky journeys, guys. And honestly, sometimes at certain points, all commissions have their unusual wacky part. I really enjoyed doing uh, Rossi. Rossi was quite an unusual one when it went from being a bunch of small lines of this dog, all these little abstract pieces, to suddenly, bang, there's a dog. Um, this is a wild one. When you start a painting like this, everyone walks past you on the beach and um, no one wants a bar of it. But then as you get into the sort of layer four and five, suddenly people start stopping, looking at it and things like that. It's, it's interesting because every layer I put on, I can feel the direction the paint's going in. And sort of, I can't see what it's gonna look like, but I can feel the trajectory it's going in. Um, and yeah, sort of like, Sort of like playing a sports game, and you're like, yep, this is looking like we're gonna win, or it's going in the wrong direction, who knows? Um, yeah. So, I always, find it, I always find it fun when maybe someone who doesn't know your style, or doesn't know the direction the painting's going in, may not see that as well. And that's okay. We don't walk onto building sites and know exactly what the building's gonna look like. That would be outrageous. So this is like my little building site. Hello, Sydney, Australia. Welcome. What happened to the old pinned video? I do knew. That sounds like fun. Tall? No. I'm like 5'9". You're a little baby. 5'9". Five nine's respectable, but it's not tall. Honestly, I think we get way too excited about, especially guys, you talk like, oh, I'd like a six foot man. And you're like, really? What happens when you go on holiday with him? And he's all unhappy the whole plane flight there for 24 hours because he's cooped up in the seat. And then when you get there, it takes him days to actually go over his jet lag and finally start becoming fun again. You know, you date a short guy, chuck him on a plane, He's in an armchair, he's relaxing, he's gonna be full of energy. You can get to location, off the plane, he's grabbing you coffee, sorting out the hotel and taking you wherever you wanna go. If you wanna travel, short guy's the key, I'm telling you that now. Unless you're on first class, but I also reckon first class is an extravagance. Uh, I think it'd be better just to go economy. But anyway, do you start with a sketch or just go straight into painting? Great question. So when it comes to going and starting with a sketch or going straight into painting, I recommend going, this is magenta right now, I'm throwing this in the hair, we're noticing some of those colours, just to add some more fun to the hair. Now, I, 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 go straight into the painting. I don't do guidelines, I don't do char I sometimes do a little bit of charcoal, just to mark some little things out, but I really just attack it. And the reason I do that, is I want mistakes, pardon me, I want mistakes to be in it. I want perspective to be slightly off, I want, areas to be blown up or shrunk, depending on how my mind sort of interpreted it. 
and um, I think that's part of the beauty of human art. So the less guidelines, the better. Just get straight into there with the paint, get started. Um, yeah, that's what I reckon. Thanks, Becky. Appreciate you. Um, do you have a do you do a sketch for the composition? No. I think I think that's the same question. But um, yeah, no, I don't. I just get straight in there, guys. Feel better about that. Kia ora, Frankie. Welcome. There's a New Zealander. Here we go. Add this into here. Beautiful, just across the skies. Fantastic. Now there's not a whole lot of red in the horizon, but we're going to add it in there because I want some fun. I want this. It'll disappear towards the end, but it'll actually stick through a little bit. So you don't just have this horizon line, dark blues, greens, whatever. We have a lot of fun in there. I want to build those colours in. <laughs> Thanks, Vinny. Well, I'll tell you what. You're welcome to join here anytime you like. You can hang out, paint with me. And hopefully, it'll really nice. start rubbing <laughs> off on you and we'll build you up and yeah. teach you doing some more painting. Josh, there is no Twitter, but there is a Instagram um, and a, um, what's the other one? Instagram, TikTok, everything's in the bio. YouTube, if you go onto the bio, link tree, bang, take you where you want to go. It was hard though, it was hard though. Let's leave on this here, a little bit in there. I took three different ones of it, but it was hard. Perfect. Did I miss a belly for the... That's funny. I did. Well spot. My bad. You're making me trip over the painting now. You caught me off guard. My poor little bell loop. We'll just leave it for now. We're not jumping over any hills, fences, or any the rest of it. So the bell loop can just be incorrect. There we go. Like that. There's the bracelet going on there. There's that bit going in there. Perfect. Now sneak over here. We can grab these shadows a little bit, just like this. Beautiful. And then a little bit more through here. Cool. The unit. I'm not sure what you're sorry about, but your apologies accepted. Do you want to make $99 million? Honestly? I'm pretty happy right now, Josh, but it sounds like a lot of admin. Dealing with $99 million. <laughs> Do you, when did you start painting? Ages ago. Ages ago. It's like two. Here we go. Beautiful. Sweep that through there. So we keep these funky colours going in here. There we go. Just coming up here. I'm probably overdoing the magenta, but that's okay. It's okay because I'm having fun. <laughs> Looks like you spend. You reckon, Charlie? I'm sorry. Well, Charlie, I wish you all the best. But at least you're here enjoying painting as well with me, which is wholesome. Let's have a look see here. Cool. Keep grabbing little parts of this out. As I can tell you that we live on the edge. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I hope the edge is fun. Let's have a look see here. I'm going to add a little bit of vibrant red. This is actually crimson now. I'm going to scoop it into a few areas underneath this, uh, over the top of this, this, this magenta. Let's see where that takes me. This handle here is definitely vivid crimson. I'm going to slap it on there. Slap this on here. There we go. Beautiful. Just like that. There we go. So that's a ski handle, by the way. That's what she's holding on to. Um, do <laughs> not quite, but sorry. Uh, just go to room now. <laughs> You're welcome, Shelby. I wanted to make sure you didn't go back to the room and uh, didn't go back home and then sit in front of the TV for three hours. So, just in case the room was humid. So while you were here, I thought, hmm, let me clever about this. Glad you like it. Do you ever feel like painting or being creative? Do you ever not feel like painting or being creative? Yeah, of course. Um, 
It's like a artistic block or a writer's block. A whole bunch of different words for it. Basically, everyone's going to get that. No matter where you are with your process, whether you're new, whether you're famous, whether you're amateur, whether you're professional, wherever you are, you're going to deal with blocks. Now, the best way to deal with a block, you heard me say it before, I'll say it here again. Um, the best way to deal with it is figure out what helps you out of a block while you're not in it. Get those techniques in place. Is it music? Is it, uh, a, is it a type of book? Is it... Um, family, friends, travel, what gets you in the zone to do your painting, figure it out, get those bullet points, even write them down. And then when the block comes on, you've got your tool set already set out to get yourself out of the block, back into your mode, and back into creating what you love. Is it easy to be an artist in New Zealand? Um, well, I guess the first question is, is it easy to be an artist? Probably not. Is it easy to be a plumber or an electrician? Mm, not really. Everything's got challenges, guys. And there's challenges all over the show. So. That's great. Oh, hey, you're more than welcome. Diamond, Diamond Brazil, you're very welcome. I, ho I hope it helps. And that doesn't just apply for art, guys. That applies for anything. If you're a uh, soccer player, a rugby player, if you work as a builder, whatever you do, when you actually are in your peak and you're doing your thing and you're nailing it, that's when you need to start figuring out, what am I going to do when I get into my slump? What's my techniques? What's my tools? And so when you get into your slump, bang, you can initiate those tools, bring yourself out of it, and get back to your peak as fast as possible. That's what I reckon. Um, but you already create, but you already, all around the world will search for you. I don't quite understand the comment count, but um, look, I'm excited that you're making it. Am I going to add some room down here? Yeah, maybe. I'll add some I probably shouldn't, but I'm going. Um, I'm probably going to splice this red now with my blue. I'm going to go for a hybrid here. Here we go. We're going to go for like a cheeky... Mm, is it violet? Not really. It's fine. Yeah, we're going to call it... No, we're not going to call it violet. We're going to call it a muddy red. Um, <laughs> Christine, regardless of how you paint, you should definitely paint regardless. Because painting's really fun. It's like singing or dancing, Christine. And maybe you're not good at painting because everyone's told you you're not good at it. How many people can sing great, but they get told by everyone that they can't sing it, so they never do? And painting's pretty similar, guys. Now, yeah. Where's this going to go? I'm going to chuck this in here. There we go. Just through there. Check this through here as well. Perfect. He looked. <laughs> the whole day routine? Well, I started this one down at the beach, guys, and I'm sorry I didn't go live with it. I went down there, I started painting it, I filmed some uh, time lapses, and I filmed some little videos. And I'll share those with you uh, later in the piece. See you later, guys. See you. Um, I'll share those with you guys later in the piece. But I basically do that, have your food and things like that as well. And then later on in the day, I'll come into the studio and go live. Or I'll do it the other way around. It all depends. So, do I do a mixture? Here we go. Keep adding this on here. Um, wonderful colors. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Now, let's add a bit more in there. Where else shall we go with these colors? Over here. It's not a conventional color to be adding in right now, but that's okay. That's a fun color. This picture's supposed to be fun, so. Now, I don't think Pink Prospect is gonna complain if we add more pink into the picture than it is there. Pink loves pink, it makes sense. Have you done much traveling? I've done so much traveling. Too much traveling. Is there such a thing? 
I'm like Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere. I haven't been everywhere. I've been to a few places. Been to Indonesia. Been to America lots of times. Been to all the states. I've been in some states and some states. I've been all over Asia. Not all over. I've been to Laos, Thailand. Yeah, Laos, Thailand, Indonesia, New Caledonia, um, Rarotonga. Um, where else have I been? I'm losing track of myself now. I'm trying to paint, trying to remember things at the same time. It's a bit of a challenge, guys. Um, also, one exciting thing. I'm just going to do this. I'm not abandoning you guys. I will be coming back in just a moment. Here we go. Oh, yes. <sighs> Turning on the heat pump. It's going to start blowing cold air in here. It's going to be fantastic. Are you in Auckland? I'll be in Christchurch next week. Do you sell on South Island? I am in Auckland. This is Auckland. We'll be having some wild weather here at the moment. And I'm going down to... Um, I used to live in Christchurch, actually. Lovely place. Um, but I do sell... They sell internationally. So... I've actually got two works which have gone to Christchurch. Um, I don't know if they're nearby you at all, but uh, that's pretty fun. So, yes, short answer is without my yammering, blabbering non-stop, um, absolutely I can ship artwork to Christchurch. Um, where's your favourite place in the world to paint? Honestly, it depends. I love nature, but I hate mosquitoes. I love the beach, but I don't want to get sunburned. I, uh, actually, I like doing painting around animals. I like it because I like how animals sometimes react to paint. Um, horses are incredibly funny. An inquisitive horse while you're painting is hilarious. Violet, it's got a little bit bored of me now, but at the start, Violet was pretty fun to paint with. Um, while it's a small horse. Uh, goats. Um, cows. When there's animals around, it's fun. Bali, I love Bali. My favourite place though, go from Bali, travel across to Lombok, go from Lombok, go further, go to the Gillies, go to Gilly Air, then go to Gilly Air and disappear. However long you wanna, you get on Gilly Air and you disappear. That's what I like. That's what I like. Um, were the floods bad? They were very bad. Um, some areas were hit very hard, other areas got off with some luck, um, but overall there's been a real showdown here in Auckland and some people had a really, really tough time. Um, I've been quite fortunate to get away with a fair bit of luck, guys, um, in terms of where I stay and where I travel has been somewhat unaffected, but it doesn't change the fact that actually whew, it's been quite a touch and go period for a lot of people. <laughs> PB, I'm glad to hear it. I think you've been in love with the artwork and I'm excited by that. It's fantastic. Now, here we go. Let's grab some more of this colour. Here we go. Here we go. Adding some colour around here. This is a murky hot pink. Is it hot pink? Not really. But it's reminiscent of a hot pink. It's like a hot pink gone stale. <laughs> how did you start selling your art and how did you get people to know about it? I'm having trouble. Well, I think it's different for everyone. So when it comes to art, I think some people's art works fantastically on a um, on things like uh, gallery walls, or it shows well on a website, or it shows well on Instagram, or TikTok, or Facebook, or at local farmers markets. Maybe you've got these prints and lovely landscapes, and maybe the perfect place for them is the local farmers market. I was hearing a really interesting story recently about a lady who works as a bar manager, and she makes all of her income, pretty much, like, like most of her income, off painting and the way she does it is she works get this at a fish and tackle bar just on the um, on the sea and so the fishermen come in there after fishing and things and they have a few beers and they have some chips and things like this and what does she do she paints fish 
who do you think wants pictures of fish? Fishermen. <laughs> um, and you know what? After you've had a really good day's fishing, who's not going to be excited about a cool picture of a kingfish? So she paints these really cool pictures. She's got real talent. She uses that talent. She's got pictures of it on her phone. And she's delivering food to all these fishermen. She starts talking to them. She asks them, hey, check this out. I'm an artist. Would you like to see my work? In fact, don't even do that. Here, check this out. I'm an artist. Look at my work. They've had a beer or two. They're excited. The artwork's literally out back. A guy says, how much for that one? She gives him the number. He says, you know what? I am walking out of here with that picture. And she makes more income off of the art than she does as a waiter. Now, that's not going to be the same for everyone. You can't just get a job as a waiter and suddenly expect to start pitching your art to tables that you're serving. But in her case, it was a perfect combination of two things. I don't know what your combination is going to be, but yeah, it'll be something special. She sounds like a businesswoman. She's, a, I mean, she's an incredible lady and she does incredible art. And so if you've really got something that you'd like to share with people, it's about finding the right place to do it and the right place to actually put it in front of the right people. Um, be prepared. Not everyone's going to love your art. If people are, are going to love your art, then you're going to get the polar reaction where some people are just going to outright hate it. And that's okay. Um, the worst kind of art is the kind that gets no acknowledgement whatsoever. That means it's really, really plain. You want to invoke a reaction out of people. And I'm not saying try and seek it out with like jarring or surprising work. Try to actually make art in a way that people can look at it and go, oh, that's fun. Or, hmm. Um, I guess my main goal when I paint is I just try and make pictures that upon completion, when you see it, you think, ooh, that's fun. And you have that little moment and then you can move on with your day. Um, and if it does that for every person, and if it does it for the same person over and over again, then that's quite potent. That's something really special that you can add to a room and build out a space with. That's like containing a small bit of fun, uh, primal, wild paint splashing around the place in a small box on a white wall where you go there. Pow, human expression. Now, what else are we gonna do with our day? I like that. Um, I saw some thing up there about Van Gogh, inspired from Monet. Look, Monet's all good. Monet's all good. If you're gonna go to art school, you're gonna hear about Monet a lot. But, that being said, I'm a Van Gogh boy. Don't come to me and tell me Monet's the goat. Monet's not the goat. Well, hey, you know what? Your opinion's totally valid. I love your opinion. If you think Monet's the best, I just, good for you. But for me, personally, I think Van Gogh is the best. I love Van Gogh, he's the goat. And I believe Van Gogh is the Plato of art and that everything since Van Gogh is one long footnote. Um, now that's a massive overstretch and sweeping statement that's hardly correct because there's been amazing artists since Van Gogh who probably never knew Van Gogh existed and prior to him obviously so but in my mind Van Gogh had a way of capturing the world through simple strokes in a way that was fun colorful expressive and it embodied everything painting wanted to be it didn't overstretch what painting should be and it didn't miss it was always something special you could look at and be like that's fun. Um, and honestly, yeah, like if you go to Starry Starry Night, if you see that, I think it's in Chicago, if you see it, don't try and get a sermon out of it. Don't try and make it change your life. Or you're sitting there going, why am I not fearing, feeling euphoria? Isn't this what I was supposed to feel when I saw Van Gogh's work? If you sit in front of that picture and you get a, oh, that's fun. Or like, a, oh, that's nice. That's done exactly what it should do. And the reason why that's all it needs to do is because it's done that for every single person who looked at it. They got a little bit of pleasure out of it and their lives got a little bit better from looking at Van Gogh's little starry, starry night. And if you extrapolate that and figure out how much happiness he has dispersed into the world from that one little wild little picture, how amazing is that? How special is that? That's the goat. Um, I hope I didn't go on too much of a waffle with that, but uh, yes, PB, she is. She is indeed. She's, she's that and more. In fact, she just left on to say thank you because 
I went to a florist today, and I apparently you're supposed to ask your Valentine to be your Valentine on February 1st. So she was harassing me, saying, are you gonna ask me today? And I was like, well, I better do something special, shouldn't I? So I went to a florist, I said, give me all your roses. And then I thought, ah, oh, it's so inconsiderate. Leave behind three roses, but I'll take all the other ones. And then she's like, oh, that's fantastic. She made me a little bouquet, and I wrote a little letter and left it by the bedside table. Cause I knew I'd be painting late, so yeah. I thought I was very clever. <laughs> what do you do? What do you think of artists like Damien Hirst and Tracy Emin, modern conceptual artists? Look, modern conceptual art is absolutely fine. There's all sorts of art out there. Me, myself, I love Impressionism. I think it's the raw, it's the most raw, pure kind of art you can get. And you know what? 95% of artists will disagree with me. Good for them. Everyone can do their own thing. That's part of the fun of art. I think in this world right now, the way it's changing and developing, how we, you know, we're ending up in larger and larger buildings with whiter and whiter walls, with uh, computers that are taking up more and more of our hours of our days, screens of an iPad, I'm on an iPad right now, I've got a phone, I spend over five hours a day on these devices. I think it's more important than ever that we get as primal as possible with our art as colourful and as wild and expressive and raw, wild paint strokes all over it. And we put a, a box around it, which is the frame, and we put that on the wall of our spaces so we can get a real release. So we can go through our lives in these white walls with these screens and it is these moments that we can actually see wild, primal, homo sapien energy on the wall. Bang. And if we can get that into our homes, into our environments, maybe it's work, maybe it's public spaces, I think that's how we can diffuse, diffuse, uh, disperse, and disseminate more pleasure and more satisfaction out there into the world. So, all art has a place. Modernist art, postmodernist art, surrealism, all these things, they do have a place. I think what the world needs right now is primalism and impressionism. Uh, I think those are the two big ones. I think we go through waves where we need things. There was that Dada movement after World War II questioning what, you know, all this sort of really important. Is it so important now? Not sure. Didn't get notified again. I'm not sure why it's not notifying you moderators. They're probably sensing that actually you're spending too much time on here. You know how your phone like vibrates or your watch vibrates and it's like, hey, you've been sitting down for a while. You sure you should, you know, maybe you need to stand up and do some twists. Maybe your TikTok's doing that to you. It's like, You've been spending a lot of time on said streams. Maybe, maybe we'll warn you about it 45 minutes into it. <laughs> Imagine if that was, act if that actually turned out to be the Taso guys, that would be wild. I don't think that's true at all, but imagine if it was. I would laugh and laugh and laugh. Okay, we've got this neck incorrect here guys. I'm gonna fix it. This comes down here. This just comes like that, there we go. This just comes in here. This just comes in here. It's gonna come down here like this. Really cool here, guys. It's wet, but it's still flowing at the same time. It's brown, but it's got some blonde tints through it. And because of all this stuff that's going on, it actually you can see greens, you can see blues, you can see reds, you can see yellows, you can see grays and whites. I want to let her hear me say, I, just, I can see grays. I might add a little bit of gray in there. There's definitely some grey creeping in there. Not not in the hair itself, but in the actual tones of the hair that we're going to be expressing. So, again, Seb, second night on your live. Lena, welcome. You're more than welcome to be here. It's an absolute pleasure. I still get blown away every single day, guys, by the fact that I can leap on here and paint and share this craft with you guys. And yes, waffle about Disney movies, yes, sing atrociously, and yes, go off on long, endless screeds of banter that had nothing to do with the question that you asked. But I think the really novel thing about it is that we can do this from all different corners around the world and do it together. Um, art has predominantly been, all the way through history, a really lonely endeavor. It's one person, a guy or girl, sitting down looking at a 2D surface and slowly 
pulling layers out of it one after another. And we talk about art being pain or being a tortured soul or, you know, sacrificing to make art. And yeah, that does sound like a sacrifice because you know what? I do love socializing. I love people, but I also love to paint. And so this is quite a potent combination for me. But um, I honestly believe if I couldn't paint with other people, when I was in art school, the best sessions I did was when five of us got together late night in a room and we're all doing our painting together. That's where I thrived. Maybe a few glasses of wine, who knows. But I'm hoping to do what you do one day, paint on live, paint on live, you're living. <laughs> Thanks, Lena, I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, regardless of live or not, guys, painting with other people, I've always found really special and it's really helped me. This is acrylic paint. This is uh, acrylic on canvas. I'll do acrylic on canvas, acrylic on board, acrylic all over the show. I like acrylic because it's non-toxic, it's non-fumy. Oils, if you paint with oils for too long, especially thick oils, you'll start to feel it up here. And although I still love oils, it's not a 12 hour a day thing to be using. Um, you are the most important thing, not any picture you could make. And so value your frontal lobe, look after yourself. I'm here now, uh, I'm new here, Paul, welcome. You're actually the second Paul got on the stream, the first Paul had to go to sleep, but until the first ball comes back, you can be ball one. But don't be unhappy if ball one comes back and we refer to you as ball two. I won't do that. We'll call you Paul Hammond if that happens. I'm um, sorry, so this is a picture of a really fun picture. If anyone missed the explanation earlier, um, what we've got here. Hello, Steph. Hello, Donnie. Hello, JD. Um, no, no. I used to be a waiter, guys. I used to work in restaurants. I used to manage restaurants now I've carried a lot of plates and so we're golden on that front this is carrying this plate and using this brush this is my own little karate kid wax on wax off um, little did I know every plate I carried every uh, garnish I put on a meal was training my hands to paint <laughs> um, lost my trail of thought there but uh, something around uh, live or not, painting with other people is what I love to do. So, close friends, phenomenal to paint with. Art and wine nights, also phenomenal. It's a place where experienced people, hey, I'm not just a, oh, sorry, PB, you're a Paul as well. All right, we've got three Pauls. So I'm so sorry, Paul, the newest Paul, you're now Paul 3, but I'll call you Paul Hammond, and then we've got PB, who's Paul 2, technically. Wait. No, we've got another Paul. We've got four Pauls now. I'm, I'm losing track, guys. You're all fantastic, but I'm losing track. Do you do this full time? Like, is painting what you do? If so, that's my goal. Any advice? Yeah, so I do do this full time. Painting is what I do, and the advice, I give to you is the same advice I give to anyone in any situation, is to love what you do. Too often, as a painter especially, you can end up getting caught up thinking, if I just put myself through the discomfort of finishing this piece off and grinding it out, someone might love it. How is someone going to love something that you sacrificed and felt immense discomfort to create? If you make something with love, such that you love actually putting it together, then someone else will feel that love or be able to just see it. You know, you'll be able to make it out in the brush strokes, the fun, uh, nature, especially in this sort of style. With Impressionism, you could really tell when the artist was loose and having a good time with it. Um, loose isn't probably the right word. When the artist is actually enjoying making the work or if they got caught up doing little itchy chicken scratches and putting the wood together. I love painting with friends too. Maybe one day we'll be able to paint together. Lena, it's a possibility. I would love that. Um, that's one of the things that I missed most about art school. Wasn't the tutors, never was it the facilities. I actually like, I like the facilities I've got now more than I ever have. And what have I got now? I've got a portable easel and I've got a toolbox full of everything I need. I never needed the giant studio. I never needed the uh, giant fancy printers and guillotines and all the rest of it. All I needed was me, my little toolbox of paint, a surface to paint and a portable easel. And that's where I feel most happy. Um, yeah, the thing I miss most were the friends. 
the friends, the group painting sessions, the sometimes we actually, I was the only painter, actually now I remember, I was the only painter in the group who did, uh, the only artist in the group who used paint. The others, there was a sewer, there was a spray can artist, there was a digital artist, there was a um, textile artist, a fashion student, like, and so I was the painter in the room, which was fun because it's sort of funny to be around so many different crafts and yeah, it was, I loved it. Um, I missed the comment there, I'm so sorry. Uh, what art school did you go to? Was it worth it, did it help? So like I was saying, the, uh, first off, don't worry about art school, worry about loving what you do. Do you love your craft? If you love your craft, that's gonna make it so much easier to pursue it. The thing about that is because a lot of us live busy lives, a lot of us want to pursue art later in life when we've already got other commitments, other goals, other jobs, other people in our lives, um, and we can't find time to do it. Maybe there's kids, maybe there's, um, uh, yeah, commitments of all sorts, work. And so if art's a drainer, which means that when you do art, you lose energy and it takes mental focus and you're running out of energy by doing it, what's gonna happen long term? It's gonna be very, very hard to stick to because after you've finished your busy week, which you already had with your social connections and with your work, what happens? Suddenly you now need to pursue art as well to try and get your dream. Make sure your dream revitalizes you. It needs to be the thing that brings you back to base camp and fills your cup up so then you can empty it out everywhere. Um, if it doesn't do that, uh, it's going to wear you down. And uh, the other thing too is if your art's not selling, the coolest thing is if it's not selling but you loved making it, it's still adding something to your life in a really wholesome way. Um, so yeah, I think I finished that one off. Lovely, do you ever paint animals? I do realism animals mostly. I miss painting with others. Um, we too do animals. In fact, T has the most recent animal painting of a Hungarian Vishla. Vishla. Vishla? I'm sorry, T. When we meet in person on Monday, um, you can tell me how to pronounce it properly. I can't wait. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Hungarian Vishla. And I've done a few other pets, uh, mainly dogs and horses. I've never done a bird, actually. That's wild. Never done a bird. <laughs> Um, and I've done cats, but yeah, never a bird. All the mammals. Um, realism is fun. As long as when you're doing your realism, and again, you don't have to take advice from me, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm an impressionist painter. If you want to get good realism instructions, probably go to a realism painter, but I really believe you need to love what you're making, uh, when you're making it, sorry really enjoy the process. Is it music that gets you there? Is it social connection while you're painting? Is it the environment you paint and maybe you do it outside with a view? Wherever you do it, it really needs to revitalize you and you need to love it. Um, nothing breaks my heart more than a realism painter or any painter who spends 20 hours slaving over a work only to try and get to the finished product when there was just yeah, there was 20 hours that I feel like got lost that you could have really enjoyed yourself and loved what you were making. So. Hydrate. Um, mm. <clears throat> A tui. T, I love that. I love that. Passion project on the list now. Tui. And actually, if anyone has a cool picture of a Tui, don't hesitate to flick it through, guys, because it may just be the picture that we paint, which would be pretty fun. There's not that many on Shutterstock, usually. Or a Kiwi! Yeah, I can get on board with a Kiwi. I can get on board with a Kiwi. Maybe we do a uh, Kapai Kiwi from the little children's books. Kapai the Kiwi. That could be cool. The options are endless, guys. The world's our oyster. We love seafood. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love the passion you have. Hey, you, that's fantastic. I'm glad you love it. And, but like I say, guys, 
this is what I love. You're watching a kid pursue his dream. You're watching an adult do what he does to relax, to refill his cup. This is my thing. And so I can't stress it enough to really go far in whatever you want to do. And when I say go far, I'm talking about successful whatever to wherever country. I'm talking about finding fulfillment and loving yourself, loving those around you, and really enjoying what you do every day. Um, find things that you love doing and find ways to do the things you do with love. I have some good Tui picks. T, you're going to have to share them. You're going to have to share them. I'm not saying you have to buy a picture off me of a uh, Tui, but I'm saying that if you'd like to, I would like to have a flick through your Tui picks and see if there's one that might just tick the box just right. That could be pretty fun. That could be pretty fun. Now, Guys, what time is it in New Zealand? Can someone give me... My phone's dead right now. <laughs> Thanks, T. Appreciate you. This is the longest I've stayed in the live. This is great. Thanks for being so... In... Oh, Rich C, you are more than welcome. At the end of the day, thank you for being here. Like I say, art's a lonely endeavor. And so actually, this is a give-take relationship. It's a give-take relationship in that I get to be um, social, I get to be in a group environment. This is actually a group environment in itself. Wait, is it galaxies or meteor showers? I think it's meteor showers. Did I say meteor showers? I'll tell you what. Okay, I think it was meteor showers, but I'll do you a little favor. Give you a little bit. There you go. You're the best, Kate. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, so this is actually a um, artist collective. So the two artists you heard in the background at the start and then saying goodbye as they left. 9.25, perfect. I'll be around for another 35 minutes and then I need to get home because I asked my partner to be my valentine and I haven't heard an answer yet. So either I need to get a yes or spend the next two hours of the night convincing you why I should be a valentine. Who knows? Um, anyway, by the by, the same was, this is a great environment, but sometimes not all the artists are working together in the same space. Sometimes it's just me. So having the ability to have the live here keeps it social, keeps it fun, builds the art, allows me to share the art with other people while we make it. Um, and I find all those things fun. And then if you get something out of this from a random Kiwi fella, painting commissions, painting art pictures, and sharing the process and some fairly patchy life advice, then uh, hey, we're all winning. So that's wholesome. Hello from Barcelona. Um, how about painting a Kia? Look, I'm liking all these bird suggestions right now. I think they're all very wholesome. Um, so, 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 so. Um, I think, I think though, I'm going to try out the uh, pictures that um, T's got of her twoies. We'll start there, and it's likely, I don't want to get, I don't want to uh, get our hopes too high off the bat. It's likely maybe there just isn't one which quite fits the bill, but after seeing the picture that T took of her Hungarian Visla, that was T's picture by the way guys, it's the picture we were painting of the dog, Rossi. That was T's picture, she took that herself. So I'm fairly confident her Tui pictures are also gonna be mind blowing, because why wouldn't they be? Um, Kakapu is also very cool, but yes. I think there was one point, I remember as a child, someone was saying there was only six of them left. Or did I dream that? I probably dreamed that, that sounds ridiculously low. Perhaps it's true. Who knows? Problem with this, uh, gloss gel guys is it hardens really quickly so although the paints can still go the paint can still go the actual gloss gel is starting to set so we'll work around it but try and dose your palette if you're using gloss gels with just the amount you need each time I say just a minute, you need, need for the next 15 minutes and go from there. 
Um, how often do you go live and is it at the same time? Rich C. It's very wild. It's the wild west out here. Um, I have done a terrible job of talking to the moderators and letting them know when I'll be here and when I won't. I've done a terrible job of creating a schedule. I used to have one on Twitch and Reddit and you know what? I sometimes didn't stick to it. Life got in the way occasionally. So I typically try to stream in the morning and then at night. So usually at night around 7 p.m. and in the morning anywhere between 7 and 9. But but the wild card is if, 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 if I see good weather out, I see an opportunity, I'll go take a reel or I might be visiting a framer. These are all things. So I'm not quite sure what the best method is, what the best method is right now. Um, but currently we're just doing it sporadically. So that's where we're at. I used to what? Oh, fantastic. Michelle, that's awesome. You are the first person, Michelle, who's been here on TikTok so far. Ah, uh, second person who's mentioned seeing me on Reddit. So uh, that's fantastic. Um, Reddit pulled down their streaming service. So it's no more. But, hey, TikTok's all good. Um, I like TikTok. It's fun. It's lighthearted. The streaming service act is act blah, 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 blah. The streaming service is actually surprisingly good. Like, um... I'm an idiot when it comes to technology, and it's so ergonomic and friendly. I just click buttons, and then it does it all for me. It's wild. Um, so huge props to Reddit. I don't know if they're listening, they're definitely listening. I didn't realize, yeah. So I didn't mean to just ghost you all. Um, they pulled down the service like, we had until 3rd of December to get our content down, and then they just deleted all the videos that were built up. Colorado, I love Colorado. One of my favorite memories in the States is having baked beans cold in a van at the uh, Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado with a very, very good friend of mine. Um, yeah, can't take, you can't pay me enough money for that memory, guys. I'm keeping that one. He was laughing at me. He didn't know why I was eating cold beans. And that made the beans taste better, if I'm being honest. Um, if I'm missing a few comments here, I'm sorry guys, uh, but maybe this isn't the place to ask, but how does one become a moderator or find them? So curious. Um, look, I've been very, very lucky that some amazing people have wandered onto the stream and we've had a connection and they've hung around and painted with me in some cases and just had me in the background and looked after me and made this a really fun space for everyone to be in. So um, I don't have an answer for that. I feel like I'm incredibly lucky. I feel like every person in here who gets to enjoy painting and doing the stuff together is also incredibly lucky with me because if it wasn't for these moderators, we wouldn't be able to create nearly as much of a wholesome environment as we managed to create here. So. I think that's really special, guys. I'm a big fan of that. Do you start paintings in the morning and have a gym or fitness in the afternoon? I can't, it depends. It depends how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling, if I'm feeling a little flat, one of my methods to grab myself when I'm feeling like I'm one of those painting ruts is I go to the gym. And maybe that involves taking the phone with me. Maybe that involves leaving it in the locker. Maybe it involves just going back to my primal roots of just feeling my body moving and feeling my blood flowing. Maybe that's all I need as a uh, pickup to start hitting the rest of the day right. Um, and so, depending. But you know what? If I'm having a good day, if I'm actually on fire, if I just want to smash through some paint, I'm just going to go straight to the studio and I'm going to use every last drop of inspiration that I have and put it through. Did you finish the painting of the marathon runner? That's a great question. I've got it just sitting over here and it's on its day two of sitting in the studio. So I've got it up on an easel, it's looking at me from over there, and I'm just seeing how I feel about it. I really feel like I might grab a smaller brush, I might go for another run on it, I just don't know yet. Jordan, hello. Um, Nova, Ness, hello Ness, thank you very much. Um, I'll grab the picture, I'll show you. Um, I made a post about it on, blah, blah, blah. On, 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 
Instagram? Instagram. Where I was asking everyone, more or are we done? Um, look, I really, really like some aspects of it. I love the fact that there's not a, too much attention on the numbers that are on his shirt. I love the fact that the leg's slightly abstract and even this right hand, whatever hand it is for you, hand leg blends into the back, into the, the, the tarmac and you know, it really doesn't try and pop Robert out. Um, I love the fact that actually the most fun I've had in the whole picture is looking at these crowds and how they blend up into the buildings and all the fun colors that come out there. And then the fact that this area is closer and this area is further away, but the way the impressionist style is shown that is that this area feels like it's all wild, it's wild paints everywhere, but it feels more detailed as if you can see shop fronts, as if you can see some sort of people by some sort of road, you know, thing. And over here, correct me if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, say I'm stupid, I don't know, but it feels blurry. It feels like there's less, like, uh, coherent things to be seen around here. The shops start fading off into the distance, the crowds start growing in terms of the blobs that are there, and yeah, the tarmac, the spread of colour and the size of colours actually grow. And so, it feels like you go, I mean, the whole thing is wild and messy. Always brought up my dad. Oh, thank you so much, Jordan. Thanks for coming along. Appreciate you to no end. Um, uh, but it feels like this side goes from uh, definitional clarity through to blurry uh, background. So. The fact that an impressionist bunch of blobs have expressed that, I don't know if I want to mess with that. I think it's great. Would estimate on a piece, I'd like to get shipped to Canada. George, absolutely. Um, most of the work actually ships to the US. Um, some of it stays here in New Zealand. Most of my stuff is in the States. I would love to ship to Canada. That'd be phenomenal. But what you need to do is contact me via um, if you go into my bio, there's a link tree there. Click on the link tree, and there's a commission thing that you can select from there, which will take you through a couple of steps. All I need to know is a couple of details, like first off, where you are in Canada, in case that makes a difference, and what size you're after, and the picture you're after. Because the picture, the size, and the location have a huge effect on how much it costs. So link into the bio, send me your thoughts, and you might say, wow, that's way too expensive. Thanks for that, but absolutely not. Or you might say, wow, that's way too cheap. Send me three. Um, yeah. So, you never know. Reach out to me and we can make a plan. Um, yep, I have you on IG already. Perfect, George. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, there's an IG there in the bio too, guys. Um, if you are an artist, I try to give as much stuff as I can here on the stream. Um, if there's anything I missed or you need clarity on, feel free to reach out via Instagram um, with a link in the bio. There's an email there too, guys. Maybe Instagram's not your style. Emails are there. Um, I've had some really cool uh, university students reach out and they've been uh, asking about assignments they're doing. They've had questions thrown at them. Um, someone was wondering about seeing the final dog pic. Yes, T. I'm so sorry. I haven't actually uploaded it yet to Instagram. Now, it is going up there. There's going to be pictures of the dog pic, just like a regular finish shot, and then some close-ups so you can see the brushwork that's being used. Because we go from talking about it on the stream like this, and then... I talk about rough, wild, primal brush strokes, and then you never get to see them up close to understand what's Super so passionate about. What's it, what? It, you know, so it's important you see that. So yes, uh, we will give you some final results there. I took some pictures. I took them on my phone. I didn't like them. They had a little bit of glare on them, so I thought that doesn't quite do Rossi justice with the color palette. Let's go back, take some more pictures, and do it properly. So that's where I'm at at the moment. So we are going to do it, but for everyone who was told that will be uploaded sooner, I lied to you. I will do it though. Uh, Daniel, you can't buy this one. This one's not for sale. This one here is going to a surf shop, and if it sells, all the money that it makes is going to go to, I think, a surf charity, um, Surf Lifesaving. 
so that's going to be very wholesome. Uh, but Paul, uh, Pearson, everyone, if you'd like pieces, there's currently no pieces available for sale. We're just doing commissions at the moment. <laughs> I've ended up behind. Um, so it's just commissions. The earliest I can get your commission at the moment is early March. Maybe late February, but the shipping factor comes into it, so early March. Because as we put down layers, we've got to let it dry. Um, but if you're really interested in a piece, and you say, look, I don't want my own commission. I want something that you've done. I want something from the heart. I do have a few pieces in the studio. These aren't usually available for sale, but I can send you pictures of them. That Send you pictures of them. And a lot of them aren't even on social media. They're just my projects of passion. So you may connect with them and you may say, that's brilliant. And hey, you may love the idea that the only two people to see it is you and I. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of things in the studio like that. And if you do want to see them, reach out to me. I'm happy to share, that, share shots of them with you. Um, yeah, there's some special stuff there in my mind. I haven't listed it. And it's very selfish of me. I haven't listed it because I like it in the studio. I think it creates a vibe. People come, they go into the studio, they see all this work around. I've been selfish, I've kept it. And that's probably when we talk about um, when a painting's finished. In this case, I definitely know all those paintings are finished because I don't want them to leave. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm managing to put a roof over my head and I'm managing to... Uh, provide food for myself with commissions at the moment. So I really want to hang on to these while they're actually making the studio space really special. But, but, <laughs> if you're really keen on one of them, I can send you some pictures and we can argue <laughs> about which one you're willing to um, part with. Which one I'm willing to part with. Sorry guys, I missed a comment there. How can you read the comments from so far? Okay, so I'm very spoiled guys. I'm very spoiled because because, 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 I started, I started this process on an iPhone. So I was reading from a distance, I did need glasses occasionally, it was pretty far away. I managed, but it was what it was. But now, I've got some amazing family members. My entire family pitched in for Christmas and birthday and they got me an iPad. Um, which was phenomenal. It was an iPad from work. But that doesn't make it any less special guys. It's a... Uh, it was a phenomenal gesture. They saw what I'm doing here. They saw how I'm going about it. And they all got together. They've got me this iPad. And so if you've noticed the stream quality, go down ever so slightly. That's why. But it's allowed me to engage more. It's allowed me to talk more. And because um, the comments get way bigger. It, it's the whole screen. So, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty blind, guys. So I'm still, like, squinting every now and again. Um, and that's why I do apologize quite profusely saying if I miss anyone's comment because I can sort of see comments that I think I've missed because it shapes them but uh, yeah look I'm 30 now guys my eyesight's going my back's going my knees are going <laughs> thank you very much Lee I appreciate it and I always look forward to your comment Lee whenever I post a reel or a uh, picture on Instagram or TikTok it, um, yeah, I've started to crave it, actually. Um, have you ever wondered something about color? Something about color. Have you ever wondered if you're colorblind and you don't know it? Maybe. Maybe that's how I probably overcompensate with color. I love color, guys. And sometimes I love color so much, I like to work with a black and white picture. A black and white picture and then I start grabbing the colours that I want to add to it and I throw them around the canvas and I see where that takes me um, by just matching the colour with the tone. So we're ignoring hues altogether. Hue is like the colour spectrum and we're just looking for tones, you know, and applying them to where we see them as the shapes. And it's really fun. I love the outcome that comes from it. We did a really, really special piece that went to New York. It's one of my favorite commissions of all time. And what it was was a picture of Beethoven. And because Beethoven went, how long have you been painting like this for? Today? How long, guys? Like two hours? I forget. Um, it was a picture of Beethoven, but because Beethoven went death later in life, 
I thought what would be fun, because he was still composing music while he was going deer, and while he was deer, was to actually paint the picture of Beethoven entirely in black and white. So not the picture itself, but the picture that I used as the reference shot was always black and white. And that way, it was like this, this subtle connection between Beethoven making music while he was deaf to an artist making this explosion of color, this wild frenzy of overlapping, saturated, vibrant colors from a black and white image. And I thought that was a really fun connection. Don't you do that to me. Don't you ask me what my favorite piece of art is. I can't answer that, I can't do it, I can't do it. The reason I can't do it is I love lots of pieces for lots of different reasons. And when it comes to my favorite piece of art, it's, yeah, that's why it's really hard to compare. It's like asking me what my favorite drink is. Don't make me choose between whiskey and rum, guys. Don't, don't make me, I can't do it. I can't, I've tried to, I can't, I can't do it. So, when it comes to art, I love that Beethoven piece because I felt that special connection between, uh, in the way the colors really popped on that one. Um, I love this picture. I love this picture for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, and even on composition alone, it's an incredible picture. I love Robert the Marathon Runner. He's fun. He's wild. There's lots going on there. I love Rossi. I think Rossi's fun too. I think Rossi's a great picture of a dog. I think it's a huge canvas. I think the shimmering different colors going on is, uh, is just great. So don't let me pick my favorite. I like them all. In fact, if it wasn't first tie favorite, I don't need to leave the studio. And sometimes when they are even, you know, when they are first tie favorite, I keep them in the studio because I like them. Simple as that. Um, I use acrylic. I find it dries fast. How does your palette not dry up while you answer questions? Lena, it does. And if, when I add this stuff to it, this is a gloss gel, this dries even faster. Now, a couple of things will have an effect on your acrylic. First off, what are you using as your paint palette? Are you using wood? Probably stop that. That sounds rude, actually. The reason why you don't use wood is sometimes the uh, liquids of the paint can soak into the wood or paper can soak into the paper. Now that's great if you're selling paint because <laughs> that's going to make your paint dry out so you're going to use more paint. But for us, we would prefer the paint not dry out. So porcelain's great. Porcelain's not going to suck any of the water out of your paint. It's going to last for a long time. I recommend the plate. If you've heard me say it before, I recommend buying plates from an op shop. But please, 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 if you're going to take that advice and start buying plates from op shops, please, 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 don't buy the good plates. You're painting on them. You don't need the good plates. Leave those for families and people who are actually going to buy plates to eat on. For you with your paint palette, grab the plates that you believe no one else will want to buy and you can use those as your paint palettes and that way the hospice or the second hand shop or the uh, charity that's selling the things will get some money. Um, you'll get plates that no one else wants and you'll now have the perfect paint palette to go pursue your dreams. And someone else gets a nice plate for their home to eat Sunday night chicken on. Everyone wins. Do that. Um, if you're going to wash the plate over and over again and use the same plate, fine. Ignore me. Go buy a fancy plate and treat yourself. Go get some real fine china and really have a thrill. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite color? Do I have a favorite color? I chop and change. I start liking um, magenta, but honestly, if I'm not painting, my favorite color to use is baby blue. Um, I like dressing in baby blue. I like baby blue dress shirts. I like baby blue pants. I like baby blue. In fact, my partner Shelby got me a baby blue wallet. That was cool. Big fan of that. And that was fun because I'd only mentioned a few times, like in passing, that my favorite color was baby blue. And it's sort of cool when you've got someone in your life who, when you are talking like that, just makes the mental note and goes, right, favorite color, logged. It's gonna be important at one stage, done. Um, yeah, very wholesome. Anyway, now I'm just, sorry, I'm just gonna slash some of this color around here and around here. There we go, pretty. Pretty. That's quite the bio set. Hey, thanks, George. I try to be as honest and as raw with it as possible. Um, I really try to blah, try to hold nothing back. Um, the reason why it's like that is because I think a lot of other artists may read it and I want it to help them. 
I really want to give you guys perspective into art itself and the process you go through. Um, and so a little bit about that bio, George, is it's actually got very little to do with me and as much as, rather than me just saying, hey, here's my achievements, here's my pictures and here's why I'm inspired, you know, whatever. It's actually not about that, it's about going, here's, here's the struggles you face as an artist and here's how, it could, you know, I hope this helps you if you're an artist and I hope this provides a little window for you to see into the life of an artist. Um, yeah, so that's what the About Me tries to do. I thought, how can I, <laughs> I, I, I was told by someone I had to have an About Me. And so I was like, how can I write an About Me but actually not, I mean, it sounds bad, but not have it all about me. And that's how I felt the best way to do it was. So I hope I hit the nail on the head. And I'm so sorry for spelling mistakes all through it. There just will be. <laughs> there, was a lady named, there was a lady named Claire who tried to help me cure some of the spelling mistakes. She got most of them. I didn't, yeah, I, there's probably still a few in there. But it is what it is. If you don't already, would you consider that? Consider in the future selling prints? Of course I would. Look, I think that prints are really important for art. And the reason they're important is they allow a lot of people who can't afford or don't want to have the physical artwork in their house, or maybe there's a high demand of a singular picture, it allows them to actually have access to pictures that they love. So prints are super important. The only reason why I don't have prints is I have been snowed under with a few commissions and a few projects of passion that I've wanted to engulf, indulge in. Um, I want to get some prints sorted for you guys, but the thing is, I don't want to give you guys a uh, subpar product. I don't want to end up with a, a print selection that's not framed well, that's not signed, that's not special in some way. So I want to make sure that if you order a print, you are actually getting a piece of artwork and not something cheap and tinny. Um, so bear with me, I will get that nailed. Um, but right now, I just want to make sure you guys get the art and we keep doing these live sessions. Thank you so much for all the great advice. It's very helpful. I'm taking notes. I missed the, oh, diamond. That's good. Can you take one other thing, diamond? I've got to request you to take something. I need you to take it all with a grain of salt because the stuff that helps me may be useful to actually listen to and take it on board, but it won't normally help you perfectly. You're on your own journey, you're doing your own thing, you've got your own loves, likes, dislikes, hates, dreams, goals, you know, location, everything. So take, take the things I say with a grain of salt, and you know what? I'll change my opinion, probably even tomorrow. You know, I, if I, I, I think one of the most beautiful things we're able to do as humans is change what we think. And um, so if you come on here one day, and I'm Yanni, how baby blue is my favorite color, and I love painting with magenta, and I believe impressionism is the future of art. And you come on tomorrow, and I'm like, you know what, Real, realism ain't so bad. <laughs> um, that's just, don't be upset by that. You're, you're allowed to change your opinion and swap it over. So whatever you do, don't go on a crusade on anything I say, because I might change my mind tomorrow. Just do your thing. How do we commission a painting? That is a great question. Now, we're almost full for February. Um, I had one slot left. I think it's been taken for February, but early March, I can get you some art out. If you want a commission, go into my bio. In my bio, there's a link tree, and you'll find uh, the link tree takes you through to Instagram, YouTube, a commission page, and an About Me page. So everything you need is in the link in the bio. I'm not sure how you get to the link in the bio from uh, the live session here, but I figure if you have a look around, you might be able to find it. Um, reminder, thanks Larissa, you're an absolute champion. Appreciate you to no end. Um, guys, I'm sorry for being completely technically, uh, technologically illiterate. Can someone give me an NZ time check? <laughs> um, and see where we're at. I have a teenager and they will help me find it. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, and if it doesn't work, guys, if you, if you, um, I need to write my email out as well, but the email's there in the bio via that link, so everything's there for you. 
Um, 9.53, all right. I am toast is me. I like your name, it's funky, it's meta. Um, we've got another seven minutes and then I need to dash. I gotta do some goodwill hunting, guys. I'm gonna go see about a girl. Here we go. But not until after I'm finished with this yellow. What a delightful color. It is puffing. Just through here, just through here. Perfect. Let me get this in here and really make these colors pop. This, this is a neglected area, guys, but I'm afraid if I paint it, it's like hunkering down in the corner. So probably when I wake up tomorrow, I'll come into the studio, I'll play some music, I'll get myself in the right vibe, and I'll do all these areas down here from a low squat, where I sort of like hunch over like Gollum and just start having some fun down here. But there's definitely this uh, cut in the painting right now, from about here to here, where I'm like, wow, fun and detail. And then I'm like, well, can't bend down and do that. And then there's a cut line through here where it's supposed to be sky, where I'm like, well, I can't really reach that. <laughs> so this is a very, with these big canvases, guys, sometimes you can get a little bit lazy. That's why I talk about the perfect size for a canvas to be, is about 40 by 50. Anywhere between Anywhere between 30 to 50 inches is about perfect. You want to be able to reach the top. See how that's a little bit far off my reach? That's about right there. So 10 to 15 centimeters below the top of the canvas. And then the bottom, I typically say the best way to have it is the lowest part of the painting wants to be your arm at a right angle or the squat you're most comfortable with. So about where that hand ends, and that's where we've typically been stopping so far. About there. And then the sides, you get more wiggle room on the sides. There and there. See, that's comfortable for my rotator cuff. So if I stand in one position, I can reach all the points of the painting. And that's the perfect size for work. And once you start going smaller, you start strangling the brush strokes. And once you start going bigger, you start having to move around, which is, it's doable, but it stops you from being able to jump in your flow state and work from one position on the work. So, and again, Again, grain of salt guys. You may be fantastic at jumping around and moving around your work. You may really like working small. Whatever you like, you do that. Take everything I say, grain of salt. Cool, here we go. Just gonna keep adding on some shapes, some colors. Adding on some shapes and some colors. Bada bing bum boom. Bada bing ba boom. Just gonna chuck this around the eyes here a little bit. I'm being naughty guys. I keep telling you don't add too much detail into the face. And it's true, don't do it. But uh, just wanna make the face look good. Just really wanna do that, so. Persevere with me, even though I'm being naughty. And breaking all the rules that I tell you guys to follow. <laughs> um, Amazing tips for bigger canvas pieces, thank you. Thanks Jelly, appreciate that. Um, but again, your own style is your own style. And I have enjoyed doing some big pieces, big long pieces where you chuck on a playlist and you just move backwards and forwards with a big tray full of paint. And you just keep walking backwards and forwards, emptying the tray, refilling it, and you just keep putting paint wherever you can see that it goes. And it's really funny because what you'll see is when you've got four meters of canvas, you'll start off with like a little bit of orange and rather than the orange going all over the work, it'll go through about three meters or two meters and pitter off. <laughs> and then you'll see like blue have like a surge two meters into work and pitter off. 9.57, all right. All right, we're stopping here because there is a lot of paint on this tray. I'll show you that. Mike, I love you to bits. Thank you so much. Um, there's a lot of paint on that tray, but just because you have the paint, don't let it get thrown on your art because it's there. This is only, that's about three to four dollars of paint, guys, left on that tray. Now, the temptation is to squeeze every dollar out of it, especially when you're a new artist and you want to make sure every dollar counts. But if you want to do that, what I recommend is having two works. So, what I should do right now, but you know, I'm going to race home is I should grab one of these boards. This is a hardboard, very cheap, 
very easy to use and the reason I grab one of these is I can get all this leftover paint like this big old blobs of paint and I can have some fun doing something abstract and expressive on this board and you know what since it is fast it's abstract and it's fun you can do whatever you want to paint in a massive hurry and have a good time it's all in the eye and the paint style yeah good words good words um yeah so get the leftover paint throw it on a different board because when you finish your piece you finished it don't just think oh i've got a bunch of leftover blue i'm just going to throw it everywhere um you've done a very good job of carefully picking out where and how much you're going to put all your colors don't ruin that right at the end of a work by just thinking right we'll just throw that everywhere i repeat myself three times that's how important that is <laughs> i used to do it this is this is this is from a, like a this is from a uh what do you say uh an x 100 percent paint user please get your leftover paint put on a different sheet otherwise all the effort you put into your work during your process will sort of be to waste another pleasure i'm even <laughs> thanks cheryl it's been an absolute pleasure being here with you guys. I've got to wash all my brushes. I've got three from this morning and the one we've used today. I'm going to sort all that out and now I'm going to whiz off home. It's been an absolute pleasure being here with you guys. Thank you for your time, Diamond. I really appreciate you jumping in here. Um, great questions. I hope I answered them well. I know I waffle, but I do my best. <laughs> um, guys, if you want to connect more, if you want more content, if you want to see more art, Please leap on the link in the bio. Everything's there. There's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's well, obviously. Um, there's uh, YouTube, there's a commissions page, there's an about me page, it's all the things you could want. I'll just I'll show, I'll show you this from a front on perspective, guys. That's where we're at. So you'll start to see the horse, the splashing around the horse, you'll start to see these waves creeping there with these textures and the ripples, the board. Part of the board is the design on it, so that's the only place you'll see these direct little cut lines, which is the text on that. The hand and the GoPro, we've done very little on that, and then this dark area in the bottom. Again, I talk about spreading your attention over the whole board. It's a big work, I didn't do that, I'm sorry guys. Um, sky, sky's gonna be fun, sky's very flat, but we're gonna find a lot of interesting textures and colors to overlay in there, just like what we did with Ross the Hungarian Vishla. Perfect, all right, I'm gonna disappear now. Leap on that bio if you want to, otherwise I will see you here next time and hopefully I'll have more control over my hair rather than this poofy mess that we've had tonight. So anyway guys, thank you so much. Do a TikTok live, <laughs> cheers mate, maybe. And Larissa, thank you so much. Uh, Larissa's one of our newest moderators. I'm incredibly lucky to have her on board. All of us are incredibly lucky to have her on board. Um, Cheryl, you're amazing. Victoria, I don't think we had Victoria here today, but she's also amazing. Um, wishing you all the best, guys. Look after yourselves. Um, I'll see you on Instagram or YouTube or wherever else you want to connect. And uh, other than that, I will see you tomorrow. T, sorry, T, yes, absolutely. I will be see and pink. <laughs> oh my God. It's late, guys. Oh, click my back. And I'm going to go for a drive home. You're all the best, guys. Look after yourselves. Love you all to bits. And until next time. Bye.